Well, hello Internet, and welcome to part 5 of my How to Code PHP tutorial. Today I'm going to cover cookies and sessions. There are two main ways for you to store information on your visitors, and this will help you create a more dynamic website. Cookies are used to store information on the visitor's computer. Much like you do with arrays, cookies are stored as a key value pair. Many people are afraid of cookies because they think those websites that use them are tracking their every move. For this reason, it may be hard to serve up the dynamic content that you want. There are workarounds for those visitors that have cookies shut off, and I'll show you those soon. You must be warned that cookies must be sent before any other HTML code or an error will be thrown. So make sure your PHP code is the first thing the browser sees before any HTML code. Websites have even been banned if they make this common error. Don't worry, I'll show you exactly how to set them. You create a cookie with the set cookie function. Its general structure is set cookie, obviously followed by bracket, whatever you want your variable name to be, the value you want to assign to it if you want to assign an expiration date, and a whole bunch of other things which I'll go to through here in a minute. You could create a cookie by just defining a name and a value like this example here where I define the value George to the variable first name. Expiration tells the browser how long you want the cookie to exist. If not set, the cookie will be stored until the browser is closed, so you probably want to set this value. If you entered the following as a value of expiration, being the function time followed by the plus sign of 3600, the cookie will exist for exactly one day, 60 seconds times 60 minutes. Path and domain define who can access the cookie data. This limits other websites from seeing your cookies. Security allows you to set that the cookie data should only be sent over a secure HTTPS connection. If the value of one is set, then a secure connection is required. You can set as many cookies as you like with repeated calls to the set cookie function. The variable name in this case does not start with a dollar sign like other PHP variables, but it also cannot contain spaces and is case sensitive. It is common to create cookies that reference the visitor's name, user ID, products they have in a cart, email, and etc. I leave it for you to decide what you'll store in your cookies. You must, however, remember these rules. Cookies can only contain 4 kilobytes of data, and you can only store 20 cookies total on a visitor's computer. After you create a cookie, it's easy to check if a visitor has any cookies saved on their computer when they return. Just check for cookies with a reference to the key name you set with the set cookie function. This statement will check to see if you stored a variable key on the visitor's computer. If you find it, perform whatever actions you like. If not, make sure you provide another appropriate action, such as set a cookie. After you know the cookie has been set, you'll be able to retrieve the value by referencing the cookie array. All of the cookies you set are available by calling the dollar sign, followed by an underscore, and cookie in uppercase letters, followed by whatever variable you assign there. Just place the name of the key in that cookie array, and you can do whatever you'd like with that information. To delete a cookie, just set the value to nothing with the set cookie function like this. And that's just about all there is to know about cookies. Now I'll explain how to use sessions in PHP. The difference between cookies and sessions is that visitor information is stored on your server with sessions. You can store an identification number in a cookie, or you can use sessions without cookies by sending a session ID from page to page. I'll explain all this with a few examples. Now I'll describe some advantages and disadvantages of sessions versus cookies. Advantages of sessions, they allow you to store a lot more information than cookies. They are more secure because the information is stored on your server. If the visitor has cookies shut off, you can still gather information. However, the disadvantages are cookies are easier to work with and using cookies are slightly quicker. You start a session by calling the function session start at the beginning of the file, just like you did with the cookie. When this function is called, it will send a cookie with the session ID called the PHP SESS ID. The ID will be a series of 32 numbers and characters. You create a key value pair with statements like this. Here I'm creating the key or variable and assigning the value of Paul. When a visitor returns to your site, you can check for the set cookie and then access those variables previously stored on your server. Here is how you would check for the cookie. If this statement comes back as true, you can perform your series of actions with the session. You would then access those stored values by calling for the values stored in the session array. Here's an example where I'm going to use the function echo to first off put the string the first name is followed by whatever value is stored 
in the variable name first name. There are three PHP functions you can use to eliminate session data. The function unset to delete a single variable like this. You delete every session variable with the following statement here. And finally, the function session destroy will eliminate all session data altogether. The main benefit you will gain from using sessions is that you can store information on your visitors even if they have cookies set off. Like I noted before, you can accomplish this task by passing the session ID from page to page. The value you append to the end of the URL is called a session ID and is stored in a constant variable you define in your code with the name SID. To use sessions in this way, you can't use cookies and also you have to tell the browser not to use cookies with this statement that I have right here. Also, when your user clicks a link or you call for the user to go to a new page, append the SID at the end of the URL. You can access the variables in the same way you did before when you use cookies and sessions together. And that is the end of part 5 of my How to Code PHP tutorial. In the future tutorials, I'm going to actually take you through real working PHP code that accesses databases and does a whole bunch of tricks that people use all the time. The first block of code I'm going to cover is how to create login scripts. Till next time.